I see these young people, these so-called millenniums, going to one of these Bernie Sanders rallies, and I think, you're a bunch of ignorant sheep. They don't, I mean, they're cheering a man who wants to take away all their money. Well, what is it? You know, um, I refer in the book to the founding fathers as the founding prophets. Yeah. And the reason I do that is not because, you know, they were like Ezekiel or Jeremiah or mm -hmm. Isaiah or anything like that but uh, because in their writings, they were so familiar with two things, human nature and human history. Mm -hmm. And when you study both, uh, it's hard to avoid certain conclusions about what happens and you see the same sorts of patterns. I, you know, I don't say history repeats itself, but mm -hmm. it is kind of a variation on a tune. And you see the same sorts of things all throughout history. And uh, I was actually just reading Justice Robert Jackson. He was one of our Supreme Court justices, was the prosecutor in the Nuremberg trials. Yeah against the Nazis, and he was commenting on the founders. He said, never before had a group of men searched the annals of human history so completely to figure mm -hmm. out this secret of how you can make a free society possible. So I mentioned the founding prophets because there's so many things they say that, of course, is in a bit more flowery English than we're used to, mm -hmm. but it could have been said yesterday. And a lot, in my opinion at least, um, you know, I respect Bernie Sanders for how honest he is, but I, you know, I don't partake of his views. But um, a lot of uh, things related to banking institutions, monopolies, class warfare type issues, mm -hmm. breakdown of morality on all these issues, the founding fathers had things to say. And, and like I said, it, it was completely prophetic. A lot of what they, it could have been well, said they yesterday. They also had a, a very a balanced view of human nature. They yes. weren't utopian at all. And Madison yeah. that wonderful quote of men were angels, you, know, you wouldn't need yeah. government. Uh, but they really understand that men were sinful. And, and, and the sinful nature of man, they set up a government that would keep man's sin from breaking out. Yeah. Well, the thing about that is we have the benefit of, well, the somewhat dubious benefit of 20th century history, the mm -hmm. bloodiest, history, uh, bloodiest century in history. Um, the founders knew that uh, human nature was that which invented and created Auschwitz, but also painted the Mona Lisa. Mm -hmm. You know, car uh, carried out uh, the purges in Stalin, Russia, and also uh, wrote Mozart symphonies. Mm -hmm. And so this duality, this, uh, this very Judeo-Christian assumption about both the depravity as well as the magnificence of human nature, uh, they incorporated that into basically everything they did as far as setting up our government. Well, we, uh, what about now? It looks like the, there are forces that wish to destroy that. I think there are. Um, I think a lot of it, you were asking about my generation in particular. Mm -hmm. I'm a millennial. Um, I think my generation has a lot of really uh, potentially great qualities. We're a very passionate generation. Uh, when we want to do, uh, go out into the business world, into the career world, we want to do things that make a difference. And I think that's all good. Um, but I would say in general, um, and it's not so much a critique of my generation, so much as just a, a diagnosis of it. You know, we were raised by a, a generation before us, and there's a lack of groundedness. We don't really know where we came from. We don't know our national story.